Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. This is another perfect day to read a quote channeling. This one is very recent, delivered on November 21st, 2023. This addresses the question of discernment. Quo is a group of higher density beings that are channeled by a group called LL Research. The ways in which they answer these questions have resonated with me deeply and I'm always excited to read some new quote channelings. I've learned so much. Group question. Ross says of compassion that it is the salvation of third density. They also say that seeing love in the moment is the goal and lesson of third density. It is by learning to love that we graduate. Yet we see loving people adopt what seem to be very confused positions about societal questions of consequence for the well-being of our population and the planet itself, taking up positions that contribute to an increasing and perhaps perilous fragmentation. We're wondering if you can speak to the role of discernment. What is discernment? Of what value is discernment in a density where there is no understanding and how may we better exercise discernment? I am Quo, and with this instrument at this time, we greet each of you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. And we thank you for asking us to join your circle of seeking this day. It is a pleasure to be in the company of those who seek the one so ardently and perpetually as do we. It is a seeking which brings love and light to life upon your planet within the heart of all those who seek and within the creation itself. For you are intensifying and personalizing that which is ever present, the one infinite creator. We ask, as always, that as we respond to this query today, which we find to be one with great insight, that you take our response, mull it over in your mind, consider if it has value for you. If so, use it in a way that has meaning for you. If any words do not hold meaning for you, then disregard them. If you will do this favor for us once again, we will be more able to respond in a broader and deeper meaning for your query. You have correctly stated that love is the reason each entity within the third density has come here to discover within himself. For this is the density of choice where you are able to take love and use it either in service to others or in the service to the self. This is the means by which the Creator may know itself more fully on each of these two paths and know that this love does indeed exist within each portion of each moment. For it is the love of the One Infinite Creator that has created all the One Infinite Creation out of that which you may call the light of love. These are your tools for moving through the third density in a manner which will allow you to utilize difficult catalysts that may bring you to your knees from time to time. And the processing of this catalyst, find the love within the moment, for this is the great journey of third density. We say also that it is quite easy to misuse these tools, for within this third density illusion, you have the veil of forgetting that makes the perception of love, the use of catalyst, and of your other selves in a manner which may be deleterious in the moment towards you and your desire to use what you have called discrimination in how you utilize one's individual perception of love and service. So many upon your planet are unaware that there is love in each moment. And for these entities, it is not a matter of discrimination, but of following the path of the mundane world, of seeking various benefits for the self, gathering about one the money, the prestige, the family, the dwelling place, and so forth. That there are many such as yourselves who are consciously aware that this love has a purpose and is to be treasured and is that which they wish to do and yet from time to time engage in the manifesting of difficult or deceitful activities that may meet their choice of the moment to be filled with some kind of anger or fear or doubt or deception that makes it impossible to exercise the muscle of love. And so it is for these entities who know there is a choice and who from time to time do not make it to the best of their ability, even in their own estimation, so they fall short of the mark, shall we say, and must regroup and reactivate the quality of discernment of the judgment of the moment that emanates from the heart of the self. It is fortunately, shall we say, the case that these failures may often give such an entity the opportunity and the desire to, shall we say, reform the expression of love through a greater dissemination and discrimination of this feeling to those about one. 
and perhaps even to the self, which is often the source and focus as well. For these feelings of separation, non-acceptance, anger, and fear, it is necessary therefore for the conscious seeker of truth to focus first upon the love for the self. And by this we do not mean that selfish kind of love that does not feel love for others, but the kind of love that builds a foundation within the being that then may be shared with others in a more inspired and informed manner. This, we feel, is the proper use, in many cases of discrimination, so that one may reflect within those moments of meditation and contemplation that which has flowed forth from one's being, from one's heart, from one's desire and make, shall we say, an adjustment in the perception of love of the self, of the Creator and all. At this time we shall transfer this contact to the one known as Austin, we are those of Quo. I am Quo, and am now with this instrument. We offer our appreciation to this instrument and to the circle for the dedication and fidelity to the process of tuning and challenging as are the rituals and procedures that allow for this contact to take place in the way that it does. For these are, in a sense, acts of discernment. These rituals that allow each individual within the circle to align themselves with those ideals and desires that speak to the larger path that each has chosen. And it is in this alignment with these ideals that we are also capable of joining you and accepting your invitation to this circle. In a way we resonate and thus come to a greater relationship with you through these acts of discernment. And it is this dynamic as we have described in this context that plays out in all contexts within the life of the seeker as they move and dance and through the creation in an attempt to discover the ideals and desires that they wish to come into alignment with and it is what has been described as discernment that allows the seeker to resonate in a way that when both attracts and co-creates the manifestation of these desires this process of discernment, as we have discussed, can be placed within the context of your journey through the octave, for you find yourself, as we have described many times, in a very formative stage upon your journey. That is the third density, that density of self-awareness and of choice, moving toward the fourth density of love, and as we have described it, compassion, which then further moves toward the fifth density of wisdom and light. These three stages upon your journey can be examined not just in that larger context that you will experience throughout many lifetimes and which will define great steps upon your journey to the Creator. But these ideas, the creation of these densities are alive in each moment that you experience now where you find yourself in the third density. You may find these teachings of self-awareness and compassion and wisdom to be relevant to you in your incarnation in your current context in each lesson that you are attempting to relate to and integrate upon your path. Within this journey of self-awareness, within the third density, the illusion is, you may say, the strongest due to the veil of forgetting. And this veil has allowed what can be described as an illusion of self to be recognized, the idea of self-awareness. This is an awareness of self not just as a singular being, but as a self that is in relationship to other whether this other be the ground upon which one walks, the chair within which one sits, the other selves of the family, the partners, the friends, those other selves that one passes on the street, those other selves within the various tribes and gatherings that you find yourself a part of throughout your lifetime, the otherness of your environment and the world that you find yourself within, and the very planet that you find yourself upon. All of these things can seem to the self as other, and it is thanks to this blessing of illusion that you as a co-creator, a divine entity with sovereignty over your domain of free will can choose freely how you wish to come into relationship with each of these things. It is your honor and your duty to do so as you become more and more aware of your environment and of your other selves and of all that surrounds you and seems other to you to discover within that otherness, the sameness that is at the heart of your own being and at the heart of all of the creation around you. This process of coming into relationship can be viewed in that context we have described of the greater journey through compassion into wisdom, not just throughout these large densities of your octave, but within your own incarnation. We have described the faculty, an aspect of your journey called compassion to be the salvation 
of your third density. And this is in part because it is that density towards which you move as a seeker through the third density. And it is the lodestar that you may believe in and follow that will deliver you through the dark night of this density to your ultimate destination. The compassion is that thing you hear within your heart, the song that you realize that you desire to dance in harmony with and in rhythm too. But in your question you have asked, how then does it seem that there can be loving other selves, individuals dedicated to compassion, who can make what seem to be confused decisions and hold seemingly harmful orientations? And what role then does discernment play in untangling this confusion for the self and for the other self? We would, in the context of this particular discussion, define the discernment and discrimination as a faculty of wisdom, the primary faculty of the fifth density, and also that which is available to the seeker within your own density, particularly within the interactions and catalysts that you experience within the Blue Ray Energy Center. But we have found throughout all experience that we have observed and taken part in ourselves that the bypassing of compassion into this seeming wisdom or discernment often results in an exacerbation of separation. The discernment that is concerned with how one might properly interact in the wisest way, the attempt to predict the outcome of one's actions to the furthest reaches that one can see, to know what is right not just for the self, but for the other self. One can engage with these faculties within a foundation of compassion, and in doing so can cause confusion for the self and for other self and perpetuate the type of harm described within the query. It is for this reason that we have described compassion as being the salvation of the third density, for the love found within the heart, the hallmark of the fourth density, towards which you, as seekers, are attempting to move and to discover within the present moment and upon your planet is an influence that can dissolve the separations that are exacerbated by a cold discernment. And it is primary on the path of the seeker in service to others to the faculty of knowing and seeing with clear eyes. And this is especially important within your current density for the veil of forgetting creates an environment of deep confusion. And one can believe in the heart of being that what they are seeing is a certain way, that the way that your society is arranged should be a certain way, that the way that others should behave or interact should be a certain way for all to be comfortable and for peace to reign. But it is our experience and our perception, particularly of your own density, that the foresight is severely limited. Despite the ability of one to convince oneself that one really does know best, that one can see far into the implications and the outcomes of one's own actions. And in this convincing, one can extend themselves beyond the bounds of compassion and into the realm of cold discernment. And in an attempt to control, it is only in stepping back and the resting in faith that love exists in this moment right now. It can be sought in this moment right now, no matter the circumstances that one views in front of one. Whatever the outcomes that one can predict of one's own actions or another self's actions, love will reign no matter what. The only relationship that one can form is to the present moment, and the choice of compassion is available in each of those moments eternally. It is through this choice that such separations can be dissolved or become transparent and the hand of the creator can then move one through compassion to make the choice that might result in greater love reigning within one's life and upon one's planet. To accept that you cannot know with certainty that another self is wrong in their convictions, that what they do causes harm, and that the only thing you can do is rest in the faith that they are the creator as you are and that discovering the connection of sameness between you and allowing this connection to develop and grow between you, that the Creator can move with greater efficacy through that relationship and through you in that relationship. This does not necessarily mean that you cannot discern what might be a better step for you to take. It does not mean that you should not advocate for a type of society or societal arrangement that you believe can result in greater compassion for all. But it does ask you to inquire within the self whether or not you are acting and seeing with the eyes of compassion. Whether it is discerning your own actions or the actions of another self. Whether you are bringing what you might call baggage or distortions into that perception. For we have found that this is inevitable. It is almost impossible for an entity within the third density to act with pure, complete transparency of self. 
And as we have described within this meeting, it is an act of failing and stepping back within that failure and witnessing the present moment as a result of that seeming failure. And if this is done in faith and with compassion for self and other self, that failure can then discover itself as opportunity for the self to unpack and untangle those distortions that one has brought to one's perceptions and one's actions and then arrange the self in greater alignment with compassion and step out again and to try again to act in service to others and to the one infinite creator and again one inevitably discovers that one has brought an illusory self to this task that has presented itself as a seeming failure and again performs this assessment and integration of each experience upon this journey the third density is not one in which you are expected to discover a pure unadulterated compassion perfection is not the province of your time within this density except for the perfection that you may discover within the imperfection that you witness within the self and within other self you will find that it will take many lifetimes to finally hone compassion as we have described it and it is simply the attempt to discover this love and to express this compassion that we describe as the salvation of third density for it is this attempt that is the true expression of self that will deliver the self beyond the boundary of third density into fourth density we describe this as an attempt because it is not always to succeed in the way that you believe it should but trust and move in faith that the very attempt itself holds the infinite power of the one infinite creator and its seeming failure is itself a movement made within the divine creation for the failure is only illusory the greatest discernment is this realization that there is nothing that can go awry within the one infinite creation and the best thing that any seeker can do when met with the tangle of confusion of the solution is to rest in the faith of this perfection and when one is called again to move to move with that faith and in confidence that the creator moves with one in all circumstances at this time we will take leave of this instrument and transfer the contact to the one known as trish we are quo we are those of quo and we are now with this instrument this discussion on the element of this illusory experience you call discernment is one that is measurably potent in this current configuration of the third density experience we see this creation as many moving pieces in terms of the creator expressing itself infinite extensions infinite roles infinite players in the game picture if you will the components of an atom the neutrons and protons and electrons moving pieces that have attraction and repulsion that steer the atom in directions be it towards another atom or away from another atom it is this pull and push that we see the creation experiencing on a macro and micro level entities in the third density at this time are themselves reflections of this dynamic this self-awareness that is experienced in this density can be seen as a contributing force for this attraction and repulsion and by attraction and repulsion we do not mean it in a negative sense we mean merely in terms of the decision making or the calculations an entity makes an entity undergoes the crossroads if you will the mapping of the incarnational journey so that when an entity much like an atom is provided input be that from the environment from the other self from the elements outside of detection in your illusory experience the entity calls upon the information within itself the protons the electrons to determine its own perception to determine its direction forward in that sense it is the calculations the observance of this dynamic within the self that we see this act of discernment discernment can be seen as the measure of the weight put upon various aspects of the self the perceptions the values the motivations all play parts in this action of discernment given the highly unique and fragmented way of this third density illusion at least in how it is experienced in your time there are infinite possibilities for a soul to make sense if you will of this input to codify it in some way to attach value judgments this is a function of the lesson to be learned within this density that there is a kind of self-empowerment and self-reliance in the self-awareness that is granted those in this experience and those elements are the tapestry of this creation they present to the self and the creator infinitely unique opportunities infinitely unique avenues for exploration and for experience in that way discernment on a larger scale has no negative or positive value to it there are no mistakes in this creation 
The discernment is a vehicle toward progression. Naturally, the course a soul takes may depend heavily upon that element of discernment. However, the larger scale project, if you will, sees no error, sees only each fragment of the Creator as perfectly imperfect as working together in the one creation. We do not mean to invalidate the, at times, painful experiences an entity may feel. We do not mean to diminish the challenges, the difficult decisions, the hard realizations, and the confusing environment in which entities must navigate. We see those challenges and we recognize the difficulties inherent in existing, or dancing, if you will, in this illusion at this time. We mean only to bring a sense of lightness to this experience. Often there is much weight put upon the exercise of discernment. There is great responsibility viewed in the practice of making decisions or deciphering one's perspective, and those are worthy exercises. Those are meaningful forays for the Creator to understand itself and its many facets. The pressure, though, is one that can potentially create complication in the practice of discernment. The desire to have things right, for lack of a better phrasing, can cloud one's judgment from the position of unconditional love. The feeling of responsibility can provide distortions or roadblocks that keep the self from realizing the larger picture. The self-awareness can lead to that feeling of separation that there is self and other self, and that the distance between the two is great, potentially causing confusion in one's attempt to discern. We recognize these challenges and we feel immensely inspired by those who continue to actively try to bridge the gap between otherness to find unity. And we would simply state that one may utilize the tool of discernment in support of that orientation of unconditional love, of service to others, as has been mentioned. There is great power in recognizing the self's motivations, the self's incarnational experiences, the self's biases, and then removing those from the input that may cloud the judgment of the perspective of the observation. To truly look through the window of the open heart with the clear pane of glass allows the self to more fully view what you call reality, what you see as this configuration of entities co-creating this experience. Trauma and intention of an egoic nature can dirty that glass pane, can make it difficult to open the window of the open heart. So it is in the ability of the entity to recognize itself as the larger whole, to recognize the other self as an equal part of the larger whole, that one may begin to brush off the blemishes of that clear glass pane that one may loosen the frame so that the window may open to the fresh air. This is done only with the sense of grace and patience for the self and for others. Knowing that there will be times when the glass cleaner is empty, the rags are all dirty, the energy to wipe off that glass pane simply is impossible to find. That is the gift of the experience in this density, that when you have these moments of challenge that cloud your judgment, that you are still given or that you create rather Additional opportunities to revisit that, to experience something new, to open the heart more fully, to witness the connection between self and other self. Through those experiences and the purposeful intention setting, one may more fully hone the ability to discern, to see it as one's ability to open the heart, to view the creation in its most unbalanced way, and to hold that creation with respect and love and a genuine desire to serve it. This instrument feels as though itself is having difficulty discerning whether these messages are coming through clearly, so it is with faith and gratitude that we shall release our contact with this instrument and transfer to the one known as Gary. At this time, we are those of Quo. We are those known to you as the principle of Quo, and we let this instrument blend with our transmission that we may put our own consciousness further upon the collective focus which you as a circle have brought to today's session regarding the role of discernment in a veiled world of shadow misunderstanding and non-understanding. Where you navigate the terrain of third density rather cut off in your conscious perception from a holistic understanding of the great variety of energies present in any given nexus point that moves over the eternal present now like a shimmering surface of infinite variety and inputs against an eternal backdrop in your veiled condition. My friends, you operate with as we had described the candlelight in the darkness. What may you discern about your environment in such a dim light? Indeed, what may you discern about the candle holder in this metaphor, who sees itself through its own projections into its dimly lit environment? 
and through the relatively or somewhat obscured mirrors present in this environment, much reaching and grasping for that which is not understood rightly happens. Much reacting to this environment without recognition of the reverberation of the psyche projected outward and reflected back to the candle holder. Much misapprehension about the nature of all things, the essence of all things, the intentions in the beingness of other selves and the self, thus the missteps, as it has been said, are oh so easy. Yet here you are, our friends, in this predicament, tasked with the great goal and grail of the third density, the seeking of the awareness of the love that is ever present in the moment, the examining of and work upon the self, that the conditions and limitations of that love may be healed and loosened within the self, that the heart may expand and activate and grow and welcome all things which it sees or thinks it sees with the candlelight, loving each and every object not for what it may do to benefit the self, but because it is a manifestation of the Creator that you, the self, and that which you perceive are both equal manifestations of the One in a seeming dance of separation and difference. This discovery and cultivation of love is your most powerful way to illuminate that shadow, for one of the key distorters of your field of perception, that which casts the deepest and darkest shadows and morphs that which falls within the field of perception and awareness is fear and its various offspring and family members including hate and condescension, prejudice, separation, and ultimately war of some sort or another. It is by learning to open the heart, particularly when it is most difficult, if not impossible, that you come into relationship with that which made you, that which you are, and that which is the heart of being of the other self and the societal self. You come to be a healing positive contributor and beacon in your collective darkness, a portal through which love may enter and modify and uplift the illusion. But in each moment, in each passing year of your incarnation, you are presented with a myriad choices of differences and distinctions. You have a plate, we correct this instrument, a table of foodstuffs before your eyes, a buffet of options. All may have the appearance of looking quite succulent and appetizing, but such may not be the actual manifested nature of each foodstuff that is before you. Some may activate the appetite and the salivary glands, but be the ultimately quite unhealthy, as you would call it. In the wellness of the physical vehicle and the inextricable relationship with the mind and body, some may even be outright toxic or poisonous, or even fatal to the health and well-being of the entity. On the other hand, some may even be less seemingly appetizing on the surface sour or tart or simply not as exciting in sugary dimensions but be quite promotional of the vitality, immunity, and helpful functioning of the body-mind complex. When, if we may continue this simple metaphor, one is at such a buffet, one must always center the being in love if they be upon the positive polarity, for in discerning between the options, the more the prejudice is present or negativity or anything which disunites the underlying unity of all things and then limits or invalidates the creator in which it is viewed or casts outside of one's heart into a judged and rejected separation creates a powering down of the heart and a reduction of that foundation and power which discernment needs to operate one can make discernment through the negatively oriented judgment of self or other but they will do so in a way that perpetuates and intensifies the separation and the shadows that go very deeply in that environment of separation and lead to conflict and war. But when the heart is powered and the self views the situation without significant handicap, or shall we say the limitation of judgment in its negative connotation, the clearer the pathway the self has to exercise discernment that it might attempt to analyze its moment in order to discern that which is for the self and that which is not for the self that which the self may contribute to the whole which the self feels to be of positive benefit versus that which may not be desired by the self to contribute. Love has a profoundly clarifying impact in casting out the shadows of separation and as we have spoken through previous instruments is the chief goal and activity you might say of the third density environment whether it is activated love or intentionally deactivated love in the case of the service to self polarization. But that love of the positive polarity can also be quite naive and gullible, you might say. That love can, in its innocence of trusting and recognizing the Creator in all things, not recognize the cloaked intentions of he or she 
who may seek intentionally to deceive, or who may simply, through their own confusion and lack of self-knowledge, be deceiving. All food items upon the table may be recognized as being of the Creator, sacred at base in value and not ultimately separate from the self yet. In their manifested form upon the stage, those items of the buffet do not have equal applicability to the self's needs and purposes. Thus, rather it is, in this simple metaphor, the choosing of the food step, or in the exercise of seeking, however imperfectly, the discerning of the intentions of other selves or of institutions or groupings of entities. It, for the positive entity, can be practiced to keep the heart always open and alive and accepting, always beginning with the acceptance. Even if the other self is indeed seeking to deceive and manipulate the self, the positive polarity always begins with acceptance, accepting in its heart the nature of the other self. Whatever their negatively oriented outward activities, releasing resistance in the trust and the faith that in the limitations and imperfection of this particular situation is an emanation of the divine light distorted in various degrees. But the self may then take the additional step after the and in tandem with the work upon purifying the heart, cleansing it of judgment, universalizing it for all things and all beings, may take the additional step of attempting some measure of clear seeing about what is being asked of the self in the moment, what or how it may serve others, what the other players upon the stage may themselves be seeking and intending or working toward. This discernment, though never, as we have described previously, exercised perfectly in the third density, at least in the outward sense, for even the wisest of your entities cannot see the wholeness of any given situation nevertheless can be a vital activity for the positively oriented entity, particularly in a world such as yours, where there are more orientations of worldview and perspective, and more competing narratives between individuals and groups and nation-states, and cultural, ethnic, religious groupings, than would be found on a third-density planet of greater homogeneity, where the population evolved as one together from its second-density previous experience. Discernment in your particular environment is often likely to be a difficult activity, perhaps an exhausting one. It may be akin to operating a compass that has lost its northward connection to the magnetic pole and oscillates agitatedly or rotates about wildly. Thus, in discernment is also the necessity of knowing the self. For discernment as we are describing it, this discernment that proceeds from the open heart is that activity of Blu-ray that can, to a limited degree within your environment, know self and other self, through clear seeing, through ruthless but compassionate honesty and clarity of sight that necessarily must recognize distinction and differentiation. Now the parts relate to each other and to the whole in service to that larger picture whereby love melts the divisions and makes transparent the boundaries, whereby that dual and seemingly paradoxical awareness may be of oneness and manyness, of apparent imperfection and total perfection, of distortion and difference on the surface, and oneness and undistortedness at the heart and the essence of all things. Love melts boundaries such that all that was separate and at odds within the worldview and perception of the lower triad of centers of consciousness may begin its journey of reintegration and amalgamation into the wholeness and heart of the Creator. But as that journey progresses and evolution moves upward, though not as we have described fully the property of third density, there is the necessity and capacity to navigate the different waves of the various oceans, to understand the signals and cues of the sea, the sun, the stars, and the weather, to know when and how to prepare for the coming storm, to know how to make use of the wind and the sunny sky. We would move toward closing through this instrument by suggesting if there is anything upon which we could ask your peoples to focus, it is forever and always the heart of love. But you also exist within an environment where you have developed sophisticated technologies and scales of power that are causing and can cause even greater planetary destruction and harm to your biosphere. As you know, this predicament is not without precedent, as others before you, and including those of your population, have in their planetary experiences had a shortage of that unconditional love which transcends tribal and group boundaries, and that love power discernment which, had their evolution taken another course, may have chosen more wisely. This is part of the palette of energies available to you at this time. 
and you may engage this process of discernment, whose conclusions we cannot give to you by engaging in the process of love-based analysis, asking questions. My friends, start there. Ask questions of the self. Ask questions of the other self. Engage in communication whenever and wherever possible without judgment. Refine your questions and see what insights they bring into the mental complexes. And as you engage these processes, you may consider as part of your own discerning faculties, whether your analysis is veering toward the judgment which powers down the heart or the discernment which operates from a vibrating heart hinges exactly on that presence of judgment and an absence or diminishment of love on one hand or feeling more awareness of love, acceptance and forgiveness and the absence or diminishment of judgment on the other. Will you perfectly clarify and cleanse your heart in the third density? It is possible, but not likely. But you may use this awareness of love with an acute mindfulness for the presence of judgment. And where you see judgment, you are called to work upon yourself that you may heal the underlying causes of this judgment. That you may, as we are speaking through the previous instrument, then clean your window pane such that love can shine. And in that light, you may then commence with the discernment that you may see more clearly. At this time, we transfer our contact to the one known as Jim with gratitude to this instrument and this circle. We are those known to you as Quo. I am Quo and greet each again in love and in light. This has been the most joyful experience for us to speak of that very basic quality of the love that is indeed in every moment, the power of the creation and the facet of one's own being may be called upon at any time to deal with any situation this is the great journey of your third density experience and we are glad to walk this journey with you for those times when you call us to your circle of seeking at this time we shall take our leave of this group and this instrument we leave you in that love and light of the one infinite creator we are known to you as those of quo adonai adonai vasu borogas so this recent channeling I found very powerful because we are meeting people all the time that appear to be very loving, but then are making choices that do not appear very compassionate or loving. I see this contradiction all the time, and I was really excited to see this question asked. And Quo explains the essence of our existence in the third density is to discover and embody love. This discovery is central to your spiritual progression and graduation to higher densities. And Quo emphasizes that in our world obscured by this veil of forgetting, discernment becomes a critical skill. Discernment in this context is the ability to perceive and understand the presence of love in every moment and situation, even when it's challenging. It's a tool for navigating the complexities of life and making choices that align with the higher purpose of love and service to others. However, Quo also acknowledges the difficulty of this task. Our perceptions are often clouded by personal biases, emotions like anger or fear and societal influences. These factors will always lead even the most loving individuals to adopt positions or actions that may seem contradictory to the principle of universal love. This channeling suggests that such missteps are a part of the learning process in our density. The key takeaway is the importance of continuously striving to understand and express love, both towards ourselves and others. This involves recognizing our failures and learning from them and adjusting our perceptions and actions accordingly. The message is ultimately one of hope and encouragement, suggesting that each attempt to embody love, regardless of its immediate outcome, contributes to our spiritual growth and the collective evolution of humanity. We're about to enter into a crazy time in the world. New elections happening. We see riots, revolts, lots of conflict, families in conflict, everyone's in conflict, countries in conflict. And you see people that you know are loving. These are good people. And they're making decisions based on hate, fear, anger, that don't align to who you see them as. And it's easy to get angry when you see these people. It's easy to find yourself disgusted in the way they act or what they say. A lot of times 
scrolling through social media is just people pointing out how terrible this person is or how terrible that person is. Yes, what we see on the face of it is terrible. But if we can step back and see that the Creator is also in them just as much as the Creator is in you, and we can simply be compassionate and let go of those judgments, knowing and embracing the idea that we really don't know everything that's going on. All we can do is look for the love in that moment, focus on that love, try to be of service as best we can, try not to judge others, and look at when we're judging others. And if we're creating separation, even when it seems there's no other way, or it's obvious that we should find disgust or hatred towards this person because of their views. Say you meet the worst serial killer in the world, the most rabid, hateful serial killer, you still can find love for that person. It doesn't matter how low or terrible they are. Take these words as a guide to embrace the present moment, to look for love no matter what. And see what happens. For that is where discernment comes. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.